The first course comes from Tracy Tonning at the University of Iowa. It's a turkey tenderloin roulade stuffed with herbs, spinach, and wild rice served with red pepper puree. Then from Tucson, Arizona, Janos Wilder celebrates Southwestern food with venison loin, marinated in adobado, a Sonoran rub, and served with a mole sauce. Finally, Norman Love does dessert. He prepares an exotic cake-like gingerbread muffin containing the French brandy Armagnac, prunes, and crystallized ginger. Upscale dining at universities like Iowa is used as a perk to lure teachers to the staff. Moreover, it often attracts serious professional chefs. Tracy Tonning was an executive sous chef at the Brennan Powerhouse Commander's Palace in New Orleans. His starter is stuffed turkey tender. Your first step that you like to do on here is go ahead and remove this sinew that's in here about halfway up. So the best way to do that, take the tip of your knife and follow the sinew down maybe about three or four inches. You want to head up underneath the sinew at this point. And pinch around with your fingers so you can get that strap out of there. And just take your knife. And bring it straight down the sinew there. You don't have to go all the way through the turkey. But you want to get that large strap out of the way there. We're going to go ahead and butterfly this now. And you're going to follow the same line that you just had that you pulled the sinew out of. You want to cut down the, straight down the center. Don't go all the way through the turkey though. and flatten it, and then take the tip of your knife, make a slight incision, keep on folding it over till you have a flat piece again. The same cut is made on the other side. The meat is covered with plastic wrap and flattened with the mallet. Around in a circle so you have a nice even layer all the way through. Do this two or three times till you have, it's about a half inch thick. After seasoning, the turkey is stuffed. We're gonna take the roasted garlic and spread that. About a tablespoon of the roasted garlic. You want a thin layer on there. More for flavor. Then part of the stuffing itself. You have this coated all around the turkey. We'll take our basil leaves, fresh basil leaves, lay them down. Then on our other half, we have just straight spinach leaves that have been blanched in a little bit of water and shocked so they keep their nice green color. I'm going to spread them out on the other half. And once you have the inside covered with the greens, you have the basil on one side, the spinach on the other side. I'm going to take cooked wild rice and spread that over the whole turkey. Thin layer, not even a half an inch. The wild rice was pre-cooked. Now we're gonna take the turkey and roll it. We're gonna wanna do so you can get both flavors. You don't want to roll it this way since we have the basil on this half. 
Roll it where the spinach starts so everybody gets a taste of both the spinach and the basil. And this can be done very loosely for the time being. I'm going to leave it just like that. The roulade is wrapped in plastic. You want to keep on tightening as you go. Let's get it to this point. I'm going to tighten it out and then twist both ends. So you really can't twist anymore. From this point, we're going to take this and poach it off. It's going to take about 20 minutes in boiling water. You want the internal temperature to reach at a, reach 160 degrees. After you've cooked your turkey, this one, as you can see, is cut in half. It is cooked to 160 degrees. What you want to do is leave it in the plastic. You go ahead and make your slices as I have started here. It'll keep it in better shape if you leave the plastic on. We're going to take five slices of that. Make sure you get all the plastic off, of course. Presentation includes a hollowed out Roma tomato holding mixed greens. You want to make it look, look fluffy. You can add a few more greens in there for color. Put that at the top of the plate. A chunky red pepper vinaigrette. Put that right in the center. This is just a straight herb oil, fresh herbs and virgin olive oil, pureed together, a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to drizzle that on the other side. Just want to put a dollop of that right on top of your greens. Janos Restaurant opened in 1998 at Tucson. Chef-owner Janos Wilder had already attracted national attention at his first Tucson operation before the opening at Big Resort Western La Paloma. For his entree, he is assisted by sous chef Steve Graham. It's venison adobado with native seed mole. A complex mole is started by pan-roasting spices. Now we're going to add our dry ingredients in here, the pecans, pumpkin seeds, our ancho chilies. The chili morito. Santa Cruz chili powder. Cinnamon. The clove. And a little bit of the oregano here. And we're toasting these to bring out the oils and bring out the flavors, bring out the richness and the flavors. These ingredients will be hydrated with veal stock and represent half of the mole. Steve Dreheim starts the second half of the sauce with potato, Anaheim chili, orange juice concentrate, raisins, onion, carrot, and garlic. Veal stock is also added to this mixture. Pumpkin seeds are popping, it's toasting. Now it's time to add our veal stock here. A 
we're going to let this simmer for about an hour. That's going to hydrate and soften the chilies and soften everything, bring out the flavor. After an hour, both mixtures are pureed, strained, and combined. We have the sausage, which we, sauces, which we pureed and married. Now we're going to essentially saute them in a little bit of bacon fat for flavor. And just a little bit of butter. This adds a little bit of sheen to the sauces, brings out the flavors and rounds them out and adds a little flavor. This is sort of comparable to what the French do with their sauces when they finish with butter, but this is a little different technique. Let me get this nice and hot. After the oil is incorporated, the standard mole flavoring, chocolate, is added. Now we've got a sauce with a nice sheen to it. At this point, we're going to incorporate our chocolate. Chocolate doesn't, isn't in every mole recipe. We put it in this one, and most people think chocolate appears in mole and almost becomes synonymous with mole. But we like it here for a little complexity and a little depth, a little bit of sweetness, but it's not to overpower the sauce. Now we're going to prepare the adobado marinade for the venison. Adobado is a traditional rub for meats from Sonora. We take red chili powder. We use a red chili powder that's made in Santa Cruz, just south of us here. Some brown sugar. Fresh garlic. Lime juice. Work this into a paste. A little bit of olive oil. I'm going to add a little more lime juice here. And some balsamic vinegar, which is a little non-traditional, but I like the flavor of the balsamic vinegar in this. I'm going to work this into a paste. Saute that. So you be apply that and rub it into the meat. It has a wonderful flavor. And we'll marinate that overnight. So the flavor is really absorbed. Then it will go, then we'll apply the breadcrumbs the following day, which we'll do right now for you. Excuse me, the pecans, thank you. The pecans. Then we'll sear it in a pan. The venison is rolled in crushed pecans and then seared in clarified butter. He's searing the venison in clarified butter over medium-high heat. Not too hot, or we're going to scorch the pecans. We want to get them nice and brown on the outside and toasty. Then we'll finish that in the oven. We're going to cook the venison to rare to medium rare. It's very lean, so you don't want to overcook it so it maintains its flavor. The venison will be finished in a 400 degree oven. As a garnish for the venison, we're making a sauteed portobello and poblano chilaquile. Chilaquile is a traditional Mexican cheese and tortilla casserole. Ours differs with the poblano chilies, of course, and the portobello mushrooms. We're going to make these individually. Steve, you want to assemble this for us? A little bit of the red chili velute on the bottom. The red chili velute is really a thickened sauce which is colored and flavored with red chilies. These are corn chips. layer of the cheese. We're just making little miniature chilaquiles here. Some red onion goes in there. You put your portobello mushrooms. The scallions. A little bit more of the 
velouté, and then you're going to repeat the process. The chilaquiles is baked at 350 for 20 minutes. A vegetable side dish is a saute of blanched diced chayote, or in Louisiana, merleton, fresh corn and dried tomatoes. A garnishing sauce is roasted corn vinaigrette. It's a nice medium rare that's going to be very tender and moist. It's a great flavor from the Adovado marinade. Lay down a little bit of our mole sauce. Now here are the chilaquiles, which we unmolded. They're going to go right there. And I put, I put the chayote squash in a little mold, too. Just unmold that right there. And lay them around like this. Take our corn vinaigrette. Make a little trail going over there. This is a smoked tomato salsa which we've made. I'm gonna garnish this right here. We're gonna festoon the chilaquiles with some tortilla shards. Nice and festive. And a little rosemary right here. Norman Love is the corporate pastry chef for the Ritz-Carlton Company. He travels a good deal, organizing pastry stations in new properties. From Naples, Florida, he prepares an element of a dessert used in an earlier show. Owing to multiple steps, it has not been seen until now. Armagnac gingerbread muffins. So we first start by placing our Armagnac, our chopped prunes, and some ginger into a sauce pot. Armagnac is an expensive French brandy. And we're going to reduce this until it's dry. We're able to get a very, very dry mass that looks like this. And this is going to be added to our gingerbread cake, so it can be set aside at this time. Meanwhile, vegetable shortening and light brown sugar are creamed. While that's creamy, I'm going to add some vanilla bean to I have flour and, and uh, salt, a number of different spices, clove, ginger, cayenne, nutmeg. Um, we're going to put them all together and sift them. I have some coffee and a little bit of molasses that I'm going to place inside. And then we'll begin to add our dry to the mixing bowl. Some extract of vanilla. I'm 
going to slowly add our eggs. And we add our reduction of Armagnac, ginger, and prunes. At this point in the recipe, it appears that we are only about a half a pound of beef suet away from a traditional British Christmas pudding. And the last ingredient is we have chopped crystallized ginger that we place inside the mix. The next step is, is that we're going to take our mix, disposable pastry bag, and place it into a fairly new, innovative piece of equipment called FlexiPan. Just recently come into the United States. It's been in Europe for a few years now. What's so unique about it is the fact that it's made of silicone and nothing sticks inside. It's completely bake-proof and freezer-proof. The mixture is piped into a flexi-pan. We can fill these little mini muffins, not have to worry about them sticking, and they bake wonderfully. All the moisture stays really well inside. Bake at 350 for 15 to 20 minutes. So easy, they just come out of the... The muffins were originally part of a dessert that included layered risotto and pumpkin creme brulee. 